Check it out, guys. Double sided bookmarks. So I've done a couple of videos on this channel in regards to creating bookmarks using the multicolor function of my 3D printer and Maker Labs image to keychain. And most of these have been a single design, either how you can do the single design all the way through, how you can do it halfway, or how you can use a holographic plate to get a really cool texture. And I started thinking, could I do two separate designs? and put them together to create a double-sided bookmark. And I figured out how to do it. And I am gonna show you how I made this really cool back to school themed bookmark featuring a composition pattern on one side and then like some loose leaf with a little book notes. I feel like this would be kind of cool because you can write on the 3D bookmark if you want. So if like maybe you need to make some notes about whatever you're reading, you'll be able to do that. But I really liked how this design turned out and I wanna show you guys how to do it. By the way, if you're new here to my channel, hi, I'm Sarah, and this is my studio. So we're gonna start over in Maker Labs Image to Keychain software. This is a really cool app that I think is phenomenal for creating flat-based designs, as well as converting images to vector format, as long as you have nice clean lines. So we're gonna start by browsing and opening up our picture. Now I am going to start with the notebook side and I'm gonna load my loose leaf image first. This comes in pretty well. I leave all of this alone at this point and just click confirm and let the software process the image. Once it's processed, it'll show me an image conversion preview, which looks pretty good. And I'm gonna click confirm. Now this one comes in and it has a ton of blues for some reason, but that's okay. I'll click confirm. My bookmark comes in and it looks like it moved all of the blues actually to one line. It converted it to this color number five. So that's great. That works for me, no problem. It's a four color design, so it only will require one AMS unit. I just need to do a couple more steps. First, I'm gonna take a moment and I'm gonna adjust it to the size that I need it to be, which is 56 millimeters in width, and that'll bring it to a height of 168. That's the size that I like working with the most. And then I need to go over to plate thickness. Now this is where I'm going to need to do some adjusting based on my print settings. Now for starters, it usually wants to do a back or you could if you wanted to have the print go all the way through. For this one, I do want it to have a back. However, I want the back to just be in white rather than in black. And I am wanting the back thickness to only be 0.14. And I'm putting in 0.14 because when I go to print my bookmarks, I'm using a 0.14 millimeter layer thickness using my 0.2 millimeter nozzle. That's what my bookmark settings are set up for. And I do that because then it gives me just slightly under one millimeter thick print for a total of seven layers. Now for this one, the image thickness, I want to be three layers thick. So 0.14 times three is 0.42. I don't use the face down mode inside the software because I find that sometimes it just gives me poorer results. So usually what I'll do is I will take this one and when I go over and open it in Bamboo Studio, I will just flip it. It takes 15 seconds to do, it doesn't bother me. So this is the first part of my bookmark that I need to make. So I will name it really quick so that I know which file I'm working with. And then I'm gonna click download. I'm gonna make sure I've got 0.2 millimeter nozzle size recommended. And I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna grab download 3MF. If you pick SDL, you're gonna lose all of that color information. So make sure you select the 3MF extension. So it's downloaded. So that's my first one. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna create my second one. So I'm gonna go back, click create from blank, browse, and I'm gonna grab my second image, which is the composition notebook. And that looks good click confirm and it recognizes it as only two colors. So I'm going to go ahead, resize it. And then I am going to go over to my plate thickness and this run around, I'm gonna set it so that it's double sided. Now for the image thickness for this one, I just need this one to be three layers thick cause it's gonna stack on top of my other bookmark. So I'm gonna set it to 0.42. You can always, if you want to do a different layer height, adjust that number accordingly, but this is the slicing profile that I have set up in Bamboo Studio for myself and what I find yields good results. So that's why I'm using 0.14. Take a moment, name it, and then 
download, again, 0.2 millimeter nozzle, and 3MF profile. So that's been downloaded. So let's go over to Bamboo Studio and get this assembled. So I have my first one, my notebook bookmark opened up and this has opened with the typical settings that it wants to use for 3D printing bookmarks or keychains out of Maker Studio. And that has things like, I'm gonna go ahead in here, reset, and then set select my 0.14 bookmark setting which doesn't iron my tops. I typically don't do that. And I remove the prime print tower because it's really not necessary. So let's set this up for doing a double-sided bookmark. So first things first, I'm gonna grab my print. I'm gonna center it on the mat, grab my print and rotate it 180 degrees. And that's it, now we're face down. Literally five, 10 seconds, doesn't bother me. And it looks good. And you'll notice if we were to go ahead and slice the plate, it's gonna come up four layers, one layer of white, and then the three layers with my design. So now that I've got the loose leaf one in, I'm gonna bring in my composition notebook. And I'm gonna do that by going over and selecting file, import, and I'm gonna grab my composition book, bring this one in, geometry only. It's gonna come in and it's gonna be hard to see for a moment, so I'm gonna turn my loose leaf one off. And it comes in, sometimes it looks a little weird depending on how the image is displayed. And you'll notice that it's got the colors flipped in here. That happens from time to time because it's assigning the colors based on the numbers and those are sort of randomly assigned in the image to keychain. So what I need to do is just flip the one and the two on this one. So to do that, I'm gonna go in here real quick and anywhere that I see a one, I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna set it to two, and then I'm gonna take the rest of them and I'm gonna select one. And just like that, we look a little better. So now what I need to do is I need to stack these prints on top of each other. What we need to do is we actually need to select both of these prints is merge them. From there, we'll need to just select our composition print. Unfortunately, when you merge them, it'll split out to all these little pieces. There doesn't seem to be a way to re-merge them underneath. I've tried it, it doesn't seem to work. So I will just need to select all of the colors of top one. So it goes through the list, puts one down here at the bottom. So I grab that first two and scroll all the way down until I hit the bottom one. There we go. And I'm gonna move this up 0.56. So there we go. So now I'm going to slice the plate. And as you'll see, I've got three layers of the top design a layer of white, and then three layers of the notebook design. And then all that's left is typically arranging the plate so that it is a little more efficient. So for me, I usually will fill the bed with copies. That'll give me four of them. I will make, I'll go make sure over to objects and make sure I'm grabbing an assembly. Yep. I will make a copy, paste that one, rotate it by 90 degrees, move it into place. And then I select all of them and stick them in the middle of the plate. And I am done and ready to go. Now, printing a design like this will take a little bit longer. Printing five of them results in a total print time of 11 hours, which isn't too bad. By doing multiples of them, I can use about 54 grams of filament with about four and a half flush. So pretty good ratio in my opinion, costs about $1.50 depending on which filament you're using. Speaking of filaments, one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're doing double-sided bookmarks is a concept called transmission distance. If you're familiar with the HueForge software and how you can do prints that have multiple layers to create all sorts of beautiful image designs, you're probably familiar with this concept, but transmission distance is essentially how many layers is needed to make the print really look completely opaque when you're shining light through it. Most of the time, if you're just doing a single color print or like a 3D model print, it doesn't necessarily matter. But with this design or any design that uses a lot of white, that's going to play a bit of a role because white can be a very see-through filament. So for instance, I have a bookmark here. You'll notice with this one that you can see the design on the opposite side kind of coming through. You can see the blue flowers, you can see the pink flowers a little bit. And that is because the white that I used on this one is not as opaque as I need it to be. The white I used on this one is my personal favorite white and that was um, polyteric cotton white. I like it, it has like a slightly warmer look, 
but it has a transmission distance of 2.5. So that typically means that it takes multiple layers before it's going to be completely opaque. What you need instead is a white that is much more opaque. I repeated the design. This one has no color transmission going through it whatsoever. And this is Polylight's cold white. This has a transmission distance of 0.5. This matches my typical black's transmission distance, which I use the Polyterra Carbon Black, and that is a opaque black. You really can't see any through it, thing through it. That's going to play a role because if you're working with designs where there's a lot of white going on, for instance, the loose leaf side of the sheet is completely white. You want to make sure that you're blocking the opposite side's design. That way, both designs can really shine. Now you could block the design with a layer of black or a layer of gray, but the challenge is, is that if you're still using a white in that design, you need to use a white that is opaque. Otherwise that color, that black or that gray or whatever color you choose to use is going to shine through. Now you could technically use that to your advantage, but in this case, since I want both designs to really be on their own and not have to worry about it, what I did was set a layer of white in the middle of it using this sturdy, nothing's busting through it white, which is again, the Polylite cold white. And I got that recommendation, honestly, just kind of searching through the Hue Forge Discord because they, whites are a color that they use quite a bit to change and adjust their designs and they always recommend you having a high TD white and a low TD white, and the low TD white that kept coming up was Polylight's cold white. Just some information to keep in mind. Obviously, if you're doing two designs and they're not needing a white or they're not using lighter colors, it may not matter, but either way, you're going to need to put a stop color in between. So my recommendation would be using this color or a color of similar transmission distance. And that's information that you can either look up in the Hue Forge group or for doing testing on your own. But at the very least, I can definitely recommend that color. And as a spool, it's not too bad. I really like working with Polymakers filaments. It's my go-to brand most of the time. And I think it runs 20 to 20 to 23 dollars, depending on where you get it. I will leave a link to the materials that I use in the description at my Amazon front store. If you're interested in all of that, I technically earn a small commission if you purchase through it, but I'm, we're, it's adding up to pennies, guys. So anyway, now that I've got these set up and ready to go for printing, let's get them printed and I'll show you the final results. So there you have it, double-sided 3D printed bookmarks. I like how this design turned out. It's a great back to school design. It's a design I think that has a nostalgic feel that everyone will like. Another detail I do want on to mention in terms of printing this, I did print these on a smooth plate. I actually recently acquired the Bamboo Labs official version of the smooth PEI plate. This was one of like the first couple of prints I was doing on it. And I must say, I really like this plate. I've played around with a couple of smooth plates and I definitely like this one. I like the surface of it. It gave a really nice smooth surface and I did not put any hairspray on this plate. This was completely hairspray free and the design stuck beautifully. You always do want to make sure when you are printing anything, especially this where the appearance on the bottom is important as well as to make sure that the plate is clean and there isn't any accidental material that might get left somewhere because I did have one where I've got a little bit of a smudge in the corner unfortunately, so it's a slight imperfection. It's not too bad. It's probably one of those I couldn't sell it. It's certainly one of those I could give away to one of my nieces and nephews and they wouldn't care. Or my daughter constantly runs around and asks, can she have, you know, the broken bookmarks for her reading? These turned out really good. So what other designs do you guys think might look really cool as double-sided bookmarks? Where are you going to take this design? Or are you going to try and do it with other projects like signs or keychains, by all means, leave me a comment below. I want to see what you guys are coming up with using these tutorials. In the meantime, if you like more content like this, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Also, don't forget to tap the like button to tell the algorithm that this video was a good one. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.